Welcome to the show, everybody. Michael with Coronavirus Diaries. And today I'm blessed to be able to speak with Teresa May, the owner of Heaven on Earth Healing. Uh, she focuses on a variety of aspects, uh, all of which pertain to personal well being. But uh, before I go into all, uh, any more details, Teresa, how about you share with the listeners, viewers, a little bit about yourself, and we'll go from there. Hi, everyone. Um, well, I started my business about 22 years ago now, <laughs> and um, I've been doing holistic medicine for all, all that time. Um, and I've also been teaching meditation classes and um, groups and drum journeying experiences and all that kind of stuff. But mainly I focus on one-to-one -one, um, therapies right now um, using hypnosis, NLP, life coaching, and for those who are um, needing more physical healing or emotional healing and other aspects, um, energy medicine is something that I also implement. So you think it's safe to say that, uh, that this isn't necessarily mainstream? Um, <laughs> right, no, it's okay. not, no. Great, and then again, uh, for any of the viewers that are new to this, uh, this is uh, a continuing type of series that we try to do with all the folks that come on the channel here. Uh, if you haven't done so already, all of Teresa's information will be in the about section below. But uh, the last time we spoke, we talked a little bit about the types of the work that you do, your transition from being in a predominantly face-to-face -face type of environment uh, where you work with your clients in the office uh, to having to transition as a lot of societies have done to this online workspace. Um, this last week we were chatting a little bit and we had talked a little bit about uh, stuff that's happening with like healthcare and 1099 employees. And I know a lot of people uh, coming from the film industry or the, um, being a videographer, a lot of my friends uh, were 1099. Uh, we had to do a lot of uh, our own management of healthcare and you know the, any type of savings, it's not quite the same as corporate or uh, W2 rather. Would you mind sharing a little bit about some of the stuff uh, you'd mentioned, Minsher, and I thought it would be a great, uh, it would be great for some other um, uh, folks out, out there to learn a little bit about, like what it, for Minnesota specifically, what is Minsher? Wow, well, the history of Minsher is actually quite long. It's over 30 years, well, it's about 30 years old, I would say. Um, so about 30 years ago, way before I got into holistic medicine, way before I was a contract worker or a owner of holistic medicine, um, I was just a single mom with three little kids and uh, n no child support or very little and uh, no medical care until the state of Minnesota decided that they needed to do something about that. And uh, it was the very beginning. Um, so they were really working out a lot of problems and it took me, I think six applications in one year to finally get through the system because it was so messed up. Um, it was so messed up that they even called me to the state legislature to speak to them and the House of Representatives to, to express to them my personal experience and what things needed to change. So I was actually at the very, very beginning of that. Well, like I said, well before I got into holistic anything, I was very much, uh, very much into social work, sociology. Uh, I was studying psychology at the time. And um, I, I guess there was a very big part of me that wanted to make a big change in, in uh, politics. So I got involved in that for a while. But um, I soon <laughs> left that whole stuff and, and followed my own specific path. So that was like the very beginning of it. And, and then uh, I think it was just a couple years ago. I really stayed away from it for a long time just because I don't know what the heck my excuse was. <laughs> um, but I finally, my kids finally convinced me to apply again. And so I did. And I was surprised. I, they accepted me. It, you know, it wasn't that hard this time. Some and when I talked, maybe. What? Some growing pains, maybe. Yeah, they worked, through, they worked all the bugs out, I really think. I mean, even the last couple of years, they had some major issues for um, the, the, the website crashing uh, several times because there were so many people applying. So many people like you and I or 1099s or, you know, business owners that just really small, small businesses that 
couldn't afford um, sure. insurance, right? So, uh, so yeah, it it's had its trials and it's still not perfect. But um, if you compare it to any other healthcare system across the country of the U.S., it's probably one of the best, in my opinion. Um, I'm uh, I'm finding especially under this pandemic condition, I have family that's down in Florida and it sounds like there is some significant um, growing pains down there with the unemployment, uh, I guess, pathways that the citizens down there are trying to, they have to get through. It's been a significant mm -hmm. issue. And then there's the CARES Act that um, I think as of the recording of this, the Florida still hasn't completely engaged with that or made it available um, but back to the min uh the minsure so it sounds like you've been an advocate of some sort for healthcare. uh i mean you're speaking to congress so yeah um i was an advocate for affordable housing and affordable health care um, during those early years and then transition to this the heaven on earth healing and holistic mm -hmm. health and uh, well, personal well-being. Um, why do you think that is? Is there? Wow. Well, during the period of time when I was studying sociology and psychology, and really I was going for a six-year master's degree in psychology because wow. I that, I really felt like that was my path. And then uh, Congress um, was the elected Congress was uh, the majority was Republican and they were all professing that uh, they were going to wipe out um, welfare and food stamps and anything that had to do with low income people. And oh, it, anyway, <laughs> anyway um, it was it was that sign that I'm like, OK, well, I'm not going to be able to get my degree like I really wanted to. And what what else can I do? I was like, you know, throwing my hands up in the air and trying to figure out, you know, what's my next step? And uh, and then I got the download. <laughs> I got the I, the thought came to my mind that um, beyond becoming a probation officer or a psychologist or any of those other professions, uh, what else was you what, what what else were you going to do, Teresa? And my thought immediately went to uh, massage, healing, and and art. So literally pushing the this narrative of helping and uplifting and uh, yeah, that was going to be my hobby. That was just going to be my hobby. And so um, I started looking at it more seriously. Looked into different massage schools at the time, and then I discovered shiatsu. And then I was just I was just blown away. Totally blown hooked. Away. Oh, totally hooked. Within the the very first shiatsu experience that I ever had, um, I was pain free for an entire month. And I had my own personal healing story was that I had fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, allergies, asthma, and anxiety attacks. I don't know. The list went on. I was on all stuff. kinds of all kinds of medications, and um, it was that one acupressure. Uh, uh, incident where I was having a, um, an asthma attack where my friend actually started to apply Chinese medicine and the ac acupressure points. And that's what blew me away then. And it was literally about nine months later when I discovered the Shiatsu school and Chinese medicine that way and took that path. And then from there, I just started adding more and more trainings, hypnosis, coaching, uh, NLP was really big back then, and it still is now, but it, it's, I don't know, uh, other countries are really utilizing it more. Um, but anyway, I, I really wrapped myself into that realm of possibility, and I've really never looked back. I mean, there is a place for allopathic medicine in my life. It saved my mother two years ago when she stopped breathing, and she has chronic well, COPD. So... Uh, I really am grateful for their ability to save her life this time around. And, um, and, and also, um, and I hope that someday it's considered by the allopathic community that holistic medicine, natural medicine uh, should also be included as integrative, not just complementary. <laughs> sure. I've, I've spent most of my life, my adult life, 
utilizing natural medicine to take care of myself because I didn't have insurance. I sure. had no health care. How could I take care of myself? I couldn't even afford a throat culture when I had strep. So um, I literally had to start looking into, well, what, what plant medicine is out there and who knows about it? Well, uh, yeah. on that, to that point, I'm curious, you know, when you started making this transition from, um, you know, more, more of the pharmaceutical based types of treatments to this holistic uh, type of medicine, at what point in time was there kind of like a significant shift in your understanding of, okay, this is something that can work for me? Um, what was it that was happening? Was it nutritional stuff? Was it, I mean, what, you know, like my mom, my mom pushes oregano a lot right now as a, 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 amongst other things. Um, I mean, I think the, the native medicine uh, has shown that there's a lot, you know, from the earth, there's a lot to be said uh, as opposed to like manufactured in a, in a laboratory, not knocking that side of things. Cause obviously Western medicine has proven uh, to be very beneficial, but for you, when you, kind of discovered this this alternative uh, to what you were trying what was it was it kind of a culmination of things or well it literally was me having that asthma attack and not and just be blown away that just by holding specific points on my lung channel and my kidney channel that uh it would it stopped my asthma attack immediately and i thought what the heck is this stuff yeah. You know, I mean, how powerful is this? And then it was, then I really, I totally got off of all the um, uh, asthma medication and uh, I was still on allergy medicine for quite a long time though, until one of my friend, yoga friends said, hey, why don't you try nettles? It's really good. And you don't get the side effects that antihistamines um, give you. And I mean, that totally fell in love with nettles from that point on. <laughs> um, and then it, it, you know, it really was a journey. It wasn't like it was just one event, but there was sure. a starting event, and then it just kind of kept going and going and going. You know, um, and let's see, what else was it? It was kind of like you found your own workflow, so to speak, where there's the a nutritional element, there's a body physical type of. Yoga well, I felt or... yeah, I felt like I was being guided all the way. I mean, just like anyone who knows who's who's had to deal with a really serious illness in their life, that suddenly, suddenly they feel drawn to certain, uh, uh, you know, messages or people um, or practitioners of very specific types of healing modalities, and you know, there it's like they they intuitively know that there's a recipe that will help them heal. So it's not just allopathic medicine. It's not just herbs or just a, a, sure. you know, a, a special diet or whatever. It's all of these things. And that's why I say that it tr really should be called integrative with all of these things, these different modalities, because sure. there is a place for everything. Um, you know, so yeah, it wasn't just one event, it was several, and I was guided all the way through it too. It was that, and then having some negative experience with the uh, asthma, or no, it wasn't, it was anxiety medication that I'm like, oh, I never want to feel like this. This is horrible. I got curious, off that for me after four weeks. I'm curious about the, the asthma. Do you still have to use an inhaler regularly, or how does that work? You know, for several years, I didn't need an, uh, an inhaler at all. And um, the last couple of years, I've had some other health issues that have come up and um, they've prescribed them. I haven't been taking them, but I, I would say, um, what was that? I think that was, was the first week of March that I came down with that cough, that dry mm. cough that everybody was talking about. And then it started to get raspy and I was wheezing and I, I thought it was pneumonia for two weeks. And when I went in to be, uh, they wouldn't test me for the COVID-19 sure. because I didn't have the fever and I didn't have the symptoms. I didn't travel to some foreign country like right. China or whatever. It's very, very so they, thin margin for testing. Very thin margin, right. So they wouldn't test me for it. But um, they did give me a pre prescription for um, an inhaler, and I used it like three times. 
You know what's... But I'll tell you what else I did. What's that? I mean, they, they did give me some other kind of like uh, cough. Uh, it was a Lozenges. pill. Oh, okay. No, it was a pill uh, and it was supposed to loosen up the, the dry cough. And I, I would say, you know, that helped. That did help. Um, but I think what helped me even more was I got back on uh, better dosages of astragalus root, echinacea, um, nettles, although nettles has a drying quality to it. So, you know, I, I waged that a little bit because of, you know, if my, if the allergies are really loud that day, then I took more nettles, but I also balanced it out with um, moistening food like um, okra or chia seeds or flax. Um, this is all like stuff that, that sounds like my mom is talking to me right now. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, and I did it all. I did oregano oil supplements as well, just to kick off. It's an antibacterial, antiviral. So it would all of those would help and um yeah would so you be what go ahead oh would you be surprised uh, to find that um because i my understanding is they're deploying like ten thousand, or they're going to test like ten thousand people for antibodies in like in california i believe if that you know assuming that it, it works the way they're hoping it will to discover antibodies in people's systems would you be surprised to discover that you potentially already had contracted COVID because of that cough or? Um, yes and no. I mean, while I had the cough, I didn't, I thought, well, this is weird. I don't normally get a cough like this, but I also started going to the gym just two weeks prior. And because my lungs the last couple of years have been weaker than normal, um, I know that when I do cardio and I really push my lungs to uh, to work harder, that I knew that I was going to be, I would go through that. That was a, a typical response when I go to the gym or start working out more, um, especially getting more cardio. I knew that my lungs would start to get weak a little bit and then work itself through. So having a cough and a chest thing, I wasn't I wasn't uh, worried, um, sure. although when the news started coming out, I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, oh, we all no. saw the exponential well, charts really, flying right. out. Right, and then I also found out that one of my clients had been diagnosed with it. When I look back at um, how, you know, the space between uh, her coming in for a, uh, an appointment with me and being diagnosed with it was 28 days. So I was like, oh, well, okay, maybe I didn't get it from her. Yeah. Uh, and maybe I didn't get it at all, but you know, it's so hard to know. Um, it's really hard to know. I guess I would be surprised if they actually said I did have it, but then I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with these, with the natural remedies, um, kind of how, how do you, when you work with somebody, what do you, how do you, do you suggest types of this type of stuff with people that work with you or do you stick primarily to more of the, the, um, the other side of uh, the other therapies, the other modalities. Right, right. Well, on occasion, I will make suggestions, but because yeah, they're just suggestions. I can't make a prescription or anything right. like that. Um, with Chinese medicine, the Chinese herbs, um, because I'm a TCM practitioner, I can do assessments. TCM. And TCM uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I'm I'm. I've been a practitioner of shiatsu and I've studied assessment processes, the tongue and pulse diagnosis um, of TCM. And because that there's a, a California company that creates and makes our um, TCM herbal remedies, I, you know, I'm not the acupuncturist herbalist that I'm putting together these roots and nuts and berries and things like that, that they would be making themselves I don't have to make it myself. Uh, I'm not licensed to make it myself, but I am a practitioner. And sure, you can and share insights. That. So I can recommend very, you know, very specific um, TCM re remedies. But as far as American herbal remedies, I don't. I make a suggestion and say, well, I've I've been reading up on this, and this these are the herbs that I would think might be helpful for you, and um, they've helped me in the past, and. No. So in a way, you're kind of a TCM lobbyist. I guess. Well, 
I don't know if I would call it a lobbyist. I, mean, I know, I'm just throwing stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there's a, there have been times in the last um, five or six years that I've been shocked to know what the FDA has been doing to uh, restrict practitioners of Chinese medicine. It's mm. really incredible. I've been shocked at that. I would be really interested to go to go down that route. It's, it seems like that would be pretty much an entire session. Uh, we'd be able to maybe pin that for next time. Sure, if, 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 it's if, a little if, risky. I don't know <laughs> if I'll uh, let you publish it, but uh, well, we we could see uh, we could see how it pans out. But I think we'll it'd be interesting. It, yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Well, uh, did you have anything that you wanted to touch base on before? I know the times. Uh, get into that time and you're a busy woman. Uh, was there anything that you, we, we gla glazed over or that you were hoping to, hoping to talk about that we didn't get to touch base on? Hmm, well, wow. You know, I, um, I guess I just want people to know that I'm still here, that I can still be helpful to you individually or in groups. I am starting to form groups and in the coming, let's see, I think my, first meditation group it'll it's going to be the um global peace tribe meditation group um right so I'm, I'm really hoping to gather people from all over the world once a month on the fourth sunday at 7 p.m so I'll look forward to if you go to my website i'll start posting those kinds of things in the coming weeks so. great well, for all the viewers and listeners, uh, all of Therese May's information is going to be in the About section down below. You can find her website, you can find her YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to keep up with her on her uh, progress going from the going in, or transitioning into this digital lifestyle, which is new to so many people. Uh, but until next time, Teresa, thank you so much for coming on the show again. I appreciate all your insights. And, uh, <laughs> for all the viewers and listeners, stick around. We got more coming at you.